Today we wrap up inequalities with our third in our series, the compound inequality, which means there's going to be multiple pieces. I won't say two because as you're going to see, we might run into a few with three here. So we'll kind of see how this goes. So when we deal with a compound inequality, we got two or more for our purposes, only two inequalities that are separated by the word and or or space in there. And so each of those are going to have their own special part of this. If you have the word or in the middle, I won't give away what that's going to mean, but we're going to see here shortly. And so we're going to solve each of these inequalities separately as if they're their own problem. So we're still going to go back and do whatever it is we need to do to get that x alone. And so for each, it's kind of nice when they basically have the same setup, because as long as we've got one of them good, we're probably going to have both of them in good shape. All about the word in the middle. Okay. Little words can have a big impact. Because as we do this, and we're just going to graph this one from what we see, you're going to start knowing before you even solve the problem what your graph and the interval notation that typically goes with it is going to look like. So once we're into this spot, I'm just going to move this up a little. When we go to graph, as long as your x is on the left, we can kind of arrow follow. But even if we didn't, arrows pointing at x, x you are less than 2. Hardy, where's your numbers? Don't have any yet. I'm working on that part. So I always like to put, again, add 1 each time to the right, subtract 1 each time to the left. I don't care if you fill in every single number, but I do want more than just the two numbers that we're working with here. And so I look here, I'm like, all right. Less than, less than or greater than, reminder, we're playing with the open circle. Because we're saying every number up to 2, but we're not including it. X is greater than or equal to 3. Again, with the or equal to, we're going to have a filled in dot. This is what your or graph should look like like 95 times out of 100. There's, there's an occasional special case, which we may run into, we may not, we'll see here. But ors, typically their arrows are going to go out, is the name of the game here. And so I think for now, we're just gonna be content with solving and graphing. Interval notation can get kind of crazy for these, okay, to be perfectly honest. So I'm, I'm not going to push that issue yet. We'll see if that changes in the future. So ORs go out is our main objective there. ANDs, let me change up colors here one more time. Okay. This is kind of a nice little note here. You might not necessarily see the word AND unless it's a word problem. So, for instance, I'm just going to write this with an AND statement in the middle so you can kind of see what it could look like. You might have, just a second here. Okay. Those two things say the exact same thing. Because if I were to cover that up, you're like, Hardy, that don't look the same. Notice the arrow is eating the 3x. Arrow still eating the 3x side. I just like to keep my x's on the left. So if you see an and, 
Okay, you can still just solve them, but most of your answers you're going to see are going to be these three part inequalities. But we're going to solve them the same way we would a two. So the goal now is to get x alone in the middle. So whatever is being done to x, we have to do it to all three parts of the inequality if it's set up this way. So we got our 3x in the middle. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. 10 plus 8 is 18. And one more step to get x by itself. Now this is a little more interesting when it comes to graphing, but it's still going to have a pattern just like the ors do. This one, I can't necessarily arrow follow, but I can if that makes any sense. Just number them all this time. Again, at least make sure you get three numbers on a graph just so we're not, so we have a little bit of a, a help with this graph. So here's how I'm going to look at this. And here's where i got to be careful, too. If I kind of forget about this part for a minute, don't arrow follow here. Because remember, the arrow is eating x. x is greater than or equal to 2. And greater than goes to the right. So starting at 2 here, we're going to be closed dot. And we're going to the right. But then when I cover up the other side, the arrow's pointing at x. x is less than or equal to 6. So less than goes left. You're like, ooh, this is kind of interesting. Those arrows are going to crash into each other. That's true. Oh, I see. I see what you did. Hi. So that's okay. And here's the easier way to look at it when it's a three-part. These are going to be your two endpoints, the two and the six, and you're going to be coloring in between them. Is basically, sometimes we call that and the in-between inequality. So as long as you get your end dots good, whether they're open or closed, we're just going to color in the middle. So typically with ands, the ors go out. The ands just look like a big barbell. Okay? So... Again, 95 times out of 100, that, that's going to be perfect. And so if you see and, even if there's two separate ones, make sure that they are coming together because you're probably going to be right. All right. I will not put you through all of these in the back. What I do want to check, though, is some of this weird stuff with fractions and the applications because that can be a little different. So let me move a couple things out of the way here. Okay. Let's jump over here to two for a minute. The weights of the wrestling team are either below 150 or greater than or equal to 175. Okay. Below 150, less than 150, less than 150. It doesn't say below or equal to. So we're just going to have our, our regular arrow here, no line under. Or, okay, so there's my or. Greater than or equal to 175. Now here's the cool thing about that little trick we learned on the front with what an or should look like. We know in our heads already, when I graph these, these arrows should be going apart. If they don't... Something went wrong. Maybe I flipped my arrows. Maybe something else happened. Oh, what do I want to count by? Um, let's, let's try fives out. I think that's going to work. And it does, okay? It does. X is less than 150. Going to the left. Open circle, because it's just less. 
or greater than or equal to 175. It looks like it's supposed to. I'm good. That's why it's always good to have these little tricks in your back pocket because then it's almost like you get a free check to make sure things are going okay. Ooh, do I have another one of those? Oh, I don't. I am going to dive into this one for a minute. I wasn't going to do three, but I think I am now because I see something that, bless you, we got a reminder of. Because with inequalities, it's the details that mess everything up sometimes. And so I don't want that to, to get us, especially, you know, down the road next week into a quiz type situation. Okay. What's my last step on the red inequality? How do I undo that multiply by negative three? We're going to divide by negative 3. What happens when you divide both sides by a negative? Uh, the thing flips. The thing does flip. I'm, I'm with you. So we got to flip the arrow. That's why I wanted to kind of do this one, because I want you to see something for a second. I'm going to do it on a Post-it, because, again, Post-its are no-nos. We don't want to do them permanently, so we just do them on a Post-it. Let's say I forgot to flip. So I just kind of left it like this. When I went to graph, I'd have run into a little problem because I'd have been like, all right, we're going this way. All right, we're going, oh, wait a minute. Everybody's going the same way. That, that's, that's not good. For the most part, that's not good. Or you're supposed to be going out. What happened? Oh, yeah, I forgot to flip. I got to flip that. So that's how we'll fix it. At least fix, you know, our, our post-it note boo-boo. Less than negative 5. There we go. Greater than or equal to negative 1. It looks right. It's an or. It goes out. Woo and we're good. So as we take a peek at some of the rest of these, and again, some of the parts I'm going to kind of semi-breeze through until we get to the part that I'm interested in here, like here. Okay, Hardy, I can undo a minus one. Yeah, I'm sure. That don't look like fun. What's my last step to undo what we're doing in the middle? Multiply by three. Nice. Divide by three. We're going to multiply everything, all three sides. Don't forget any of them. By three. That X is alone in the middle. Do I need to flip this time? Nope. Nope. We multiplied by a positive three. No flippage. No flippage. Oh, let's see. Can I go by ones this time? Whew, barely, but I made it. All right. And again, when you see the compound inequality, the one big one, make sure you get your dots right on the numbers. So or equal to, or equal to, we're going in between. We're set, and we're set to. So again, if you're paying attention to detail, these ain't going to be bad. All right. One more application, one more fraction, and we're off and running. A doctor tells you to keep your daily calorie intake above greater than 1,500. Got to be able to have enough energy for the day. And, oh, and... Less than or equal to 2,000. Okay. You can either
you could do it this way and do it in pieces. Or if you're not comfortable with that, if you like doing it in parts, we already had the X is greater than 1500. Then I'm not putting the word or there, that's gonna mess things up. And then you could do this one separate and say, well, less than or equal to, they're the same. There is no right or wrong with that part. This is nice because it kind of lets us know Oof, duh. It lets us know, okay, there's my endpoints. 1500 doesn't have a line under, open circle. 2000 does have a line under, closed. Because even if I did it this way, X is greater than 1500, I'd have had an arrow going to the right. X is less than or equal to 2,000. I'd have had an arrow going to the left, and I'd have seen they crashed the middle. So again, little words make a big difference. All right, as we do the last one, I'm going to freeze frame here. Try out number six. I will be back with a solution, but I want you to kind of give it a try just to make sure that we're in good shape when I let you loose here in a second. If you're checking this out later, hopefully you paused me and didn't just let me run wild here. Always be like, use that detail at the beginning, that or to give you that clue what your graph should be looking like here at the end. And let's kind of see where we're at. So hopefully that one, I just wanted to make sure again, the fraction, different fraction than number four, but similar in the way we're going to handle it. Once we get that one half alone, just multiply by the denominator. That'll dump the fraction and get us where we want to be. It's an or. They should be going in opposite directions, and they are. And so we should be ready to rock. Cool. So. The practice that goes along here, and I will be able to tell you tomorrow what day next week we'll be quizzing. I just am trying to decide between a couple of things, and then I'll have that up to date and, and ready to rock and roll for you. But we're going to be rolling along here in the practice packet. I still see a couple of you writing, so I'm trying to pause. I'll put it back in a minute if I need to. We're going to be rolling along here. On 23 and 24, am I holding out on the error stuff? Am I holding out on it? I'm not going to necessarily hold out on it. So let's do this. So compound inequalities. On 23 and 24, I will be honest. I would say if you did the evens here, that would be fine. That's going to get you a couple of application problems, an and, an or. I got all the answers for you to check on Classroom, or I'll have them up front here. So, I mean, if you wanted to check a couple of odds, you could do that as well. But then, oh, look, they're back. Error analysis is back. Error analysis on 25 and 26, finding the problem, saying, hey, their boo boo's right here. Why'd they do this? and then doing it correctly. So there's two of them. That's gonna kind of get us thinking as far as being a problem solver on these. And again, if you get stuck or you think, party, they didn't make a mistake. Oh, come see me, they, they made a boo-boo, it happened. Um, and then like I said, tomorrow we're gonna mix up a little the way that we solve stuff to get something a little different in. And I'll be able to give you a little more info on what we're gonna be looking at next week when we get 
there. 